Ah, uh, hell yeah. Hi, everyone. Green and Line Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new Princess Nokia album, 1992 Deluxe. Rapper, underground fashion icon, New York native. Princess Nokia. She has been making waves for a little while now, the biggest of which was last year's EP, 1992, a digital release that kind of went under my radar last year, but now Rough Trade Records has picked this EP up, and together with Princess Nokia, they have expanded this thing into a 16-track monster. That's 16 tracks without a single sketch or interlude. Nokia is a bit of an enigma in the hip-hop landscape right now. She has a pretty strong buzz, but somehow she's still sitting on the fringe of rap. And she's a true oddball that represents the melting pot of New York City, not just racially, but also culturally and contextually. And all of this reflects in her music in a really big way. For one, the instrumentals on this thing bring a mix of very spacey, dark, moody cloud rap, hard-hitting trap bangers, as well as some kind of soulful, nostalgic 90s throwbacks. She also raps in a number of vocal registers on this thing. Sometimes she has a very deep, husky delivery that she usually hits with much slower flows, reads like she's bringing like a lot of Gangsta Boo or a little Kim influence here, maybe even a dash of Tupac on the song Saggy Denim. Her voice also reaches like a weirdly pitchy timbre on the song Goat 2 that's still enjoyable. It's just really kind of odd, very unique. And of course on a lot of the songs on this thing, there's, there's like a distinct New York accent coming through on a lot of her rapping. And of course there are tracks on this thing where she's rapping in this much higher pitch, just very bratty, girlish delivery. It sounds much younger, but it's way more aggressive, like on the song Brujas, or Tomboy, or especially Katana, 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 Katana. She's a bit of a vocal chameleon on this thing. I mean, there are even moments where her inflections on the song Green Line read a lot like that of fellow New Yorker Wikis when he raps, who is featured on the track just before this one on this very project. Nokia constantly changing it up from track to track to track doesn't necessarily take away from the consistency or the enjoyability of 1992 though, because her eclectic personality always pours through in a track via her verses, her song topics, her reference points. On 1992, Nokia is pulling on everything from weed, to goth culture, to anime, to MySpace, to video games, drugs, fashion, and, and the wealth of cultural tidbits that one could bring up living in New York City. The project is kind of emotionally varied too. There are moments on here where you see Nokia bringing these braggadocious tracks that just have this bulletproof confidence to them. And then there are other moments where she's addressing growing up, uh, just being a bit of an oddball and people kind of ridiculing her and putting her down. There are actually multiple moments on this project where she kind of recognizes her own outsider status on the song Different, which is honestly one of the many things that makes this project special. I love that Nokia takes the time to kind of fly her freak flag and just boiling down all of those weird personality quirks and interests that make her special and really just lacing them very deeply into her music. It's that personal detail and it's that charisma and it's that willingness to be so open with the audience that makes 1992 really entertaining even when it's hitting some shortcomings. Like how pretty much all the songs on this thing flow like a bit of a compilation, not really like a, a formal album. Occasionally Nokia's wordplay is a little obvious or her word choice can be kind of corny. Still though, in spite of that, it's still interesting to hear Nokia kind of explore things like her own femininity and how she kind of veers off of the gender norm path on the song Tomboy. Occasionally the production on this thing can be kind of flat or hollow, leaving Nokia feeling just a little unsupported for me. However, as her popularity grows, I'm sure this is something that will improve. And there are some moments on here where her rapping and her delivery comes off a little stiff, like on Receipts or on the song Bart Simpson. But still, I really enjoy these tracks for their raw and rugged demeanor, for their amateurish charm, for just how, uh, I guess, uh, revealing they are in a way, how vulnerable they are. You know, rapper rapping about themselves is altogether nothing new, but this is one of those rare moments where I feel like I'm listening to somebody do a deep dive into themselves and we're kind of hearing a very uh, layered person on the mic. Some of which I think is definitely a result of showmanship, like when I see Princess Nokia in a music video, on social media, hear her in a song, I do get this sense that she's building up a bit of a character or kind of embellishing elements of her personality, of her life, to just kind of make the, the, the vision of Princess Nokia 
even bigger, which I think is great. I feel like to, to make it in rap music, you kind of need to have a larger than life personality. And the cherry on top of this is just that there's so many songs on here where she just approaches with a really sharp, a really smart, a really interesting song topic or concept. Again, like the song Tomboy, which I mentioned. Katana, which is pretty much just like a fight anthem. On the song ABCs of New York, you have her tributing her city, talking about all the things about New York that she loves, also taking shots at white supremacy. The song Mine, in my opinion, is maybe one of the smartest and most fun tracks to approach this very touchy subject of women's hair. Talking about ownership and wigs and extension and beauty salons. The song is catchy and it's way more educational and informational than it is confrontational. Songs like Different and Goth Kid are where she is kind of wearing that weirdo label proudly. Uh, goth Kid specifically getting into the emotional side of things, talking about how being goth, being a, a dark person emotionally isn't necessarily about the clothes on your back, it's just about how you feel and how you see the world. World. Also, there's a strong element of femininity to this project, too. I would say for a rap record, it's pretty feminist. I mean, Princess Nokia isn't really rattling on about the patriarchy or anything like that, but there is this really strong sense of wanting to break down social barriers and social expectations put on women through her art and through her power as an artist. This thing is a really great mix of tracks, way more hits than misses. I'm sorry I'm late to it, but better late than never. Even though this is technically a 2016 release, I think Nokia and Rough Trade have really expanded it into a whole nother beast. One which to me says that Nokia is easily one of rap's more interesting figures right now. I hope she continues to just grow, experiment, and carry the torch for just all the freaks and geeks out there. I'm feeling a light to decent eight on this thing. Tran? Zishin, have you given this expanded deluxe edition a listen did you love it did you hate it what would you rate it you're the best you're the best what should i review next hit the like if you like please subscribe and please don't cry over here next to my head is a review that you should check out or hit the link to subscribe to the channel i'll see you guys in the next one forever